Spy planes might be the reason many people believe UFOs exist. From space-bordering altitudes to designs fit for a sci-fi movie, these aircraft may look alien from a distance. Spy planes exist so militaries wouldn't have to be moving blindly. And although most modern aircraft are fitted with stealth tech and some level of intelligence gathering capabilities, spy planes remain the original aircraft designed for these purposes. From the U-2 spy plane of the Cold War era to a purely experimental Star Trek inspired aircraft from the 90s, here are five intriguing spy planes that have shaped modern aviation. U-2 The U-2 was the answer to a desperate call from the United States during the Cold War. The US needed more intelligence on the activities of the Soviet Union and wanted to minimize the guesswork involved in making strategic decisions and foreign policies. Here, Lockheed Martin would get involved with the proposal of an aircraft that features advanced photography equipment that would take pictures of the Soviet territory from very high altitudes where Soviet radars couldn't sniff it out. This aircraft would later be known as the U-2, aka Dragon Lady. It is a single-engine spy plane from the stables of Lockheed Martin's secret Skunk Works division. The $70 million aircraft is operated by the United States Air Force and at some point in the past, even the CIA and the Chinese Air Force. The U-2, which was proposed in 1953 by Lockheed Martin, got approved in 1954 and had its first flight on August 1, 1955. It was introduced into service just one year later in 1956, introducing the world to a level of intelligence gathering. It could go 70,000 feet in the air in any weather and operate in the dark of night as much as during the day, making it almost invisible to everything at the time. And the U-2 has had quite an adventurous career. It flew over China, Cuba, the Soviet Union, and Vietnam during the Cold War as the eye in the sky for the military. After the Cold War, it would take part in conflicts that broke out in Afghanistan and Iraq. And even after that, it would still have roles to play in multinational NATO operations. So far, the U-2 has done everything from electronic sensor research to satellite calibration, and it remains one of the very few aircraft that has served the United States Air Force for up to 50 years as the U-2 remains in active service today, though it has undergone a series of upgrades to keep up with the times. A-12 The A-12 came about after the invisibility of the U-2 wore off as the Soviets quickly upgraded their radar systems. The A-12 would be a big leap from the U-2, with Mach 3 speeds that would prove an operational hypersonic aircraft was possible. The Archangel program from which the A-12 came to be would also birth the SR-71 and indirectly the SR-72, Lockheed Martin's hypersonic jet of the future. The CIA was keen on the A-12 because it provided answers to all the questions they had. It also had a reduced radar cross-section thanks to years of research in advanced aerodynamics and a solid partnership between Cambridge's Scientific Engineering Institute and Lockheed Corporation. Clarence Kelly Johnson, like with the U-2, designed the A-12 under the Oxcart program, which was aimed at maintaining a technological edge over the Soviet Union. It also had higher altitude capabilities compared to the U-2, and just as much range. It was groundbreaking in almost every regard, and it seemed like the CIA had finally gotten their reconnaissance aircraft that would last a lifetime. But that wasn't the case. The A-12 would only operate for one year, from 1967 to 1968, in part due to the program's high $2.1 billion costs, but mainly because the Kennedy administration decided to cease all reconnaissance missions over the Soviet territory. MiG-21 The MiG-21 is one of the most successful spy planes in history. It has served at least 60 countries across four different continents. Today, it remains active in up to 18 different air forces. It's a supersonic plane with Mach 2 capabilities, a range of 410 miles, perfectly balanced for effective reconnaissance with a convenient price tag of $25.1 million. The MiG-21 was primarily developed for the Soviet, Indian, Croatian, and Romanian air forces. Since its introduction in 1959, 
this lightweight single-engine, highly maneuverable plane from the Soviets shook the world and impressed everyone. So much so that China had to push for the license to produce a Chinese version, known as the Chengdu J7. The MiG-21 remains the most widely produced jet fighter ever, thanks to a combo of its top performance even in unimproved airfields, its maneuverability, supersonic speeds, range, and affordability. F-117 The F-117 Nighthawk is the first operational U.S. aircraft built with stealth in focus. The jet was the response to the Department of Defense's request for an aircraft that wouldn't emit any significant radio, infrared, or light energy. As a result, the aircraft would easily evade detection by radar or any other sensors that relied on bouncing frequencies and energies off of an aircraft to locate it. Every bit of the contract to build the F-117 was shrouded in secrecy, and understandably so. It is an attacking aircraft that relied much on its element of surprise, not speed or agility. And thus, it didn't move at supersonic speeds, nor did it have afterburners. So it might not win any medals for dogfights, but it would have a full shelf for stealth. Lockheed's approach to keeping the Nighthawk stealthy was an impressive one. Its triangular outline, swept back wings, and surface composing of multiple flat planes combined to reflect radar waves away from the aircraft. And whatever radar waves remained were then absorbed by the radar-absorbing material that the jet is coated with. The jet's navigation system was almost entirely indirect, too, by using inertia guidance, digital maps, and radio commands from satellites and other aircraft it could find its way around easily without emitting any signals of its own. The F-117 is currently semi-retired, as it is no longer taken to the skies for official missions, but is still being used as a training aircraft. The jet has a high flyaway cost of $107.7 million, and thus only 64 were ever built, with 5 being prototypes, while the remaining 59 were the production versions. The Nighthawk's successor was the world's first fifth-generation fighter, the F-22 Raptor. YF-118G The Boeing YF-118G Bird of Prey is a unique jet, so unique that it was never intended for production. Instead, it would serve as an experimental stealth testbed for testing different aircraft technologies and develop new ways to make aircraft less visible to the eye and radar. This demonstrator aircraft was Boeing's private project, and they funded it fully with an investment of $67 million. It was named Bird of Prey after a spacecraft from Star Trek of the same name, thanks to their similarities in design. The development of the Bird of Prey began in 1992, in the most secret place of all, Area 51. And over the next few years, Boeing would design and piece together a single-seat, subsonic, technology demonstrator powered by a Pratt & Whitney JT-15D 5C turbofan engine with a max operating altitude of 20,000 feet. It would go on to give Boeing useful insights on improving cost-effectiveness and performance by using single-piece carbon composite structures combined with plywood frames and glass fiber molds. It also shone more light on the importance of 3D virtual reality in aircraft's design and assembly processes, which has now become the norm. The jet was also loaded with unconventional features, such as fuselage and wings that were parallel to each other for radar waves reflection. It had its engine air inlet mounted to the top, behind the cockpit. And then there were the active camouflage tests where the jet would change its color and luminosity to match its surroundings for increased stealth, but that bit hasn't exactly come to life. The Bird of Bray had its first flight in 1996. It would fly 38 times before retiring in 1999, and even after retiring, it would remain a secret for years until its features, technologies, and capabilities became industry standard, and there was just no need to conceal it any longer. However, much of the jet's not-so-conventional features remain a mystery to the public. Only one was built, and it was eventually donated by Boeing to the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force, where it remains to this day. Spy planes made clear the importance of stealth in the skies. Their ability to carry out missions without needing to shoot a single missile was almost magical. 
Boeing's next generation, completely autonomous X-45A UCAB, for instance, was a result of the data obtained from the bird of prey. And we've done some intense research of our own that suggests you should subscribe to this channel to support us in spreading the word about these wonder machines. Quick question, do you think the bird of prey in particular should go into production? It does seem very science fiction. Kindly give us a thumbs up on this video if you learned from it. That helps with the YouTube algorithm. That'll be all for now. Thanks for watching.